uh, taking the rain. Um, um, from what I understand, really sort of picking up where uh, some things were uh, getting left off uh, in um, in the in the in the in the district and uh, making making improvements. Um, his right hand man, okay, uh, with him every step. We do have some new folks who uh, participate in this district. Uh, Christy Munson, who was here in our last meeting, she's our new volunteer coordinator. Uh, she's been doing a lot of volunteer events up in uh, Riverside Park and working with her up in River Rock Gardens, our system-wide specialty gardens manager, Madeline McGrady. Um, she's really sort of uh, hopefully uh, led what is a visible improvements up at a uh, uh, River River Rock Gardens. Um, other people who uh, circulate uh, but participate here in District One uh, are Mike Sawyer, work at Forestry, our facilities manager with, with buildings, Charlie, uh, and our circles and plantings horticulture person, uh, Eileen Martin. Um, additionally, here with us we got Demetrius. Uh, and uh, I always like to acknowledge our uh, council member, Joe Golombek, here in the room. His, his tremendous staff. No, you're shaking your head now. Okay. Yes, she is. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, partners with Black Rock Riverside Alliance, uh, River Rock Baseball, Little, River Rock Little League. Baseball, yeah. Baseball. League, yep. We dropped Little League, so it's just baseball. Though. Okay, it's just baseball. Um, uh, so heard her along the way. Again, this is really all about um, communication, open dialogue, making sure that um, you know, things that need to get brought up are being brought up, uh, but our goals are really to sort of be continuing to implement um, the restoration plans for affordable park. Larger effort we do every five years, uh, but really all about trying to sort of prioritize and focus efforts and energy on park restoration while also increasing engagement, increasing stewardship, um, and, um, you know, again, just circling back, open dialogue and communication wherever it's needed, about whatever is needed. So getting down to the meat of the conversation and the progress along the way, um, just to sort of quickly summarize, and then we're going to sort of open it up for conversation. Uh, last meeting, um, you know, due to great work of people in the community and the discussion in the room, uh, a real focus and energy around uh, a what would be considered a new project, um, but an important project up in Riverside Park, um, focused in and around the existing uh, kids' waiting pool, the shelter building, the playground, the uh, lighthouse area as sort of a key focus area, needing needing immediate attention, needing immediate focus, needing immediate immediate re re rethinking. As a result of that, a meeting was scheduled. Uh, council members in attendance, Black Rock Riverside Alliance, uh, uh, Deputy Commissioner for Parks, Amy Rabb, uh, met on site and sort of started to put the pieces together and sort of continue to get on the same page. Um, some of the key highlights of that conversation, you know, started with why has this school been closed for so long? And the city uh, you know, informed me, at least, and some of their real challenges with lifeguards. Um, one of the things I took away from the meeting, they said that they, they held a, a program to train people to become lifeguards. They had 104 people sign up. They had 30 people show up, 10 of which could swim, and eight of which finished the course. So not a very good, uh, you know, in terms of in to out um, product in, in terms of getting qualified lifeguards to apply for these jobs. And they really had a hard time filling the, the positions. The priorities there are the, you know, starting with the indoor pools and then staffing up pools as they can. Uh, and um, they just were not able to open many, many of their, their, their pools, which was very much unfortunate and felt greatly here in Riverside Park. Um, then the conversation turned to just get a gaining cons consensus, broader consensus on the idea of uh, with that reality in place, um, converting this pool that is closed unless there's lifeguards to a splash pad feature that can be open without any uh, lifeguards or sort of any monitor was confirmed again at that meeting 
Um, you know, those, those, those things can be turned on in the morning and used at will. Um, no fences, no barriers, um, just, just, just open access and use. Um, but the conversation broadened out, again, basically at our last meeting and through this, this, this meeting about more, more uh, is needed beyond just this conversion, but sort of this whole area needs some rethinking, some thought. And first step first, we need to figure out how we're going to, you know, pay for these things. Um, so fundraising, you know, is something we all need to focus on uh, with that, with that tension. Um, the third thing, which I'll circle back on, was a little conversation about the ice rink, but we'll table that for the for the for, for the moment. Yeah. The lighthouse, we need to engage the arts council if they're responsible for that. Yep. So I don't know how to do that, but we need to make sure that they're notified. So that, that, that's been done. And uh, I talked to Emerson today. Uh, he said he was going to go out and have a look at it because, believe it or not, there's still a little confusion about what their role is because. Uh, in terms of, and, and honestly, I brought it up to him and he said he needs to go out and look at it to know the answer. So that you know, doesn't mean like they've got everything sorted out, um, but there are components of that. Are there are the plaques, which are for sure Arts Commission, but then there's the lighthouse itself, there's the light in it, there's the plaza, there's the lighting on the plaza. And we're not entirely sure where the line is drawn, no, but they are engaged. Whatever they decide, we really get it right. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. And have him look at it nuts. <laughs> yeah, tell him what it is. So he can actually, actually see how the lights are not. Uh -huh. Yeah. Point. And we talked about that at that meeting that these are non standard <laughs> lights. You know, if we can get the Olmstead standards in there, then it's really easy to change the light bulbs. But these are like unique, one of a kind things. Um, on the order of um, other other districts, the central luminaires in those circles at Ferry and Symphony, it's a major challenge to get those lit too. So I mean that that again, another of these unique situations create unique problems um, that we struggle to uh, solve. So they are engaged, and we are um, sort of moving that forward. Um, again, a little bit of recap, um, but. The existing area that we're talking about with the sort of just starting point of the big rectangle, uh, a little under 8,000 square feet. We did a little comparative analysis last meeting. So just for, for those of you who are aware of a splash pad that, that, that is functioning well in the city, uh, Cas Park has one uh, roughly half the size. So what we're thinking about is two times that. So again, sort of giving everyone sort of a, a, a sense of imagination of you know, what a starting point is for sort of rethinking that. And the preliminary cost estimates of really just this sort of small thinking is that replacing that that one feature with another feature, you know, around, you know, roughly three quarters of a million, million, million dollars. But I think the conversation I started last meeting and I think where I want to lead it today and sort of let me stop talking is I think we're all thinking about this bigger than just that, you know, one conversion. That's a key component, that's a centerpiece, um, but other things that came up at our last meeting that I wanna build on here today are, you know, providing better access to the bathrooms and removing the porta potty, which hasn't been done. The porta potty is gone. Uh, that has been a productive step forward. Uh, but making sure that, you know, beyond, you know, when Little League games are being played, beyond when the uh, pool is open, um, that people in this area have access to, to bathrooms. Right. Something to sort out. Yes. Yeah. You'll be really bad that we've been out doing the curb tracks because I've been more parks and I've been doing them all the time. And what can you get your open during the day? Can I ask you what can I your open during the day? Why are there such a? Um, so it's a. Yeah. yeah. So it's a. It's um, to my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it's a. It's a. It's a contractual thing. Those bathrooms are in the conservancy's contract to open and close. 
this facility is not in the Conservancy's contract to open and close. Um, so it's tied to other other arrangements. Um, with, hmm? Is the facility, are those facilities bought through the store? Or couldn't you just get it? You know, it's, I don't think it's tied to historic, it's just tied to the contract. And, you know, uh, the, the Little League uses that building in its entirety, operated, operates the concession stand, and the pool operates the rest of that building and those both both bathrooms. The Conservancy has the role in the pools, so it's just left out of our agreement as it currently stands. So, so, the, city, the, so the city is responsible then for opening the bathrooms? Yes. Because you have the concession stand. I have been in the bathroom, so, so I have access to open bathrooms when, when you have the requirements. Yes, yeah. right. But the rest yeah. of the time, it would be under the purview of the, the pool. city. Yeah. The city. And the pool. Tied to the pool. How is it in the city yet? There's nothing there yet. There's no pool associated. So that got put into our contract. You know, we don't go into Tosh Collins. Nothing to do with Tosh Collins. Okay. So yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. So it's like facilities were tied to the, the main user and the main. Um, so you know we need to, but we need to find a way to make those. You know, we've got these bathrooms. So, you know, they should be useful. We don't want to have porta potties. That's obvious. So we just got to find a way through it, one way or another. Other things that came up: traffic calming and safety access along the perimeter streets. Uh, we had a productive conversation with Eric Schmarter, who's also at this meeting, forgot to mention him. Um, so there's there's this follow-up there um, tied to that striping for handicap in particular, but also access points and just striping period, I think would uh, help, help clarify some things. Again, I'm just summarizing things that came out of last meeting. Um, improving sight lines through the, through the playground area. Uh, part of that being modifying some of our vegetation, uh, vandalism issues at the shelter and playground, adding security cameras was, 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 was raised, also considering a mural in the ongoing conversations, adding bike racks, things we want to see, getting people uh, securing their, their, their bikes and coming to the park on bike, enhancing coordination with Buffalo Public Schools on the free lunch program, making sure that's humming, that's working well, that's serving the community. And then also modifications over the lighthouse areas to deter loitering and the nefarious activities, uh, improving sight lines being one way and one sort of factor on raised to sort of take that to the next step. So again, that's that's kind of what's been raised. So we can uh, double down on some of those things or what, what what, 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 are the, what are the things that haven't been raised that we think, again, are going to feed into uh, this larger conversation? Anything else, anything we, we've missed, anything I missed in terms of uh, uh, capturing comments to date? Stipend is major. The stipend, that was, that was major problem, right? Yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, uh, and I don't know if you got to kind of hold of, of, of error, but I some of these things are. Yeah, but Eric, Eric reiterated all of our points. So marking the um, marking all the parking spaces along the Crowley side, um, along the park side of Crowley, um, to actually make them parking spaces, putting in handicap accessible ones. He's also responsible for the bike racks um, and for doing crosswalks and additional signage. The only thing that um, he felt that couldn't happen relatively quickly would be putting in a new crosswalk halfway down where the park entrance, where the playground entrance is from Crowley. Um, because to do that right there, yeah. So we asked for a crosswalk there um, because the kids usually walk halfway down Crowley and then run across the street there. Um, and there's nothing to signify that. And he said the only reason that would take longer and um, might not happen until sometime next year would be because they actually have to get, they have to do a design on the other side of Crowley, on the residential side of Crowley, because they have to make sure that whatever they put, wherever they put it, 
it can be mobility accessible. So that means taking out curb and putting in, you know, the, the sloping ramp to go to the street and that sort of thing. And well, it's technically the hell strip, so it's city property and it can be done. But like, if you look, there's a tree on one side of the driveway that's almost directly across. Mm -hmm. And then there's, um, the, and then there's the driveway. So they may need to actually have to reposition that a little bit, but he was going to have the engineers start looking at it to see where the best placement for that would be and, you know, what's going to be involved in actually making it happen. So, you know, he's pretty much said that everything else can be done pretty easily um, and just worked into the normal workflow for the streets department, uh, traditional scraping and signage. So just to sort of move and sort of bounce around between issues and design solutions, one sort of glaring thing that pops into my head related to that is people are walking on this side of the street to get to this entrance because they don't have an option in the park side. Like they might cross over here and walk along here if they right. had a sidewalk. So as we move to design, you know, while I think it's great and I think it's important to have traffic coming along Crowley, you know, maybe signalized cross or you know, just formal crosswalks along the way because that slows everybody down. That's great. Yeah. We also might want to think about some redundancy and you know some other things. Well, in the in. sidewalk, the sidewalk on the west side of the entrance only goes part way up. It doesn't even go all the way to the park entrance. So yep. yeah, continue continuation of the sidewalks would be great, and taking it all the way um, up to the end would be fabulous. Mm -hmm. What I was going to say too is right where that entrance is, and I know that's my truck right there, the baseball, there is that speed bump too, right yeah. almost directly at that entrance. So I'm yeah. sure that plays a factor in it as well. Yes, yeah. yeah. there's that I know that that's a that I call it battle, but that's what I got to stop. Yeah. Any other? Things to add to the sort of bucket, I guess, as we uh, call it? No, you did a really good job recapping all the things that we talked about here at the last meeting, and then also what we, you know, kind of went through with Andy and Eric and Joe and you <laughs> at the park. So thank you. Good, good. Brian? Yeah. We have nothing along that parking area because older cars pull. Nothing stopped them from driving. In the park from there, right? Nothing to stop the cars. So there's curves. And then the curves, um, a pillar. They can get in there and just point it. You can get a vehicle in that on that cross path right by that. So what worries me is the car could jump the curve and hurt somebody like would have happened at the park. So yeah. So that that we're gonna cover that in a second. Don't you just 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 just. Is that the no, that's, that's, that's all good. That's good. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, the perimeter security. Uh, I've got some draft plans that we're going to go through. So once we once we feel like we're on the right track with this project, that's the next one. Um, so with regard to that, thinking about next steps, uh, we kind of talked about, and I think it's maybe time to start. Um, you know, moving it along. Now we've had our meeting with Andy and Joe and Eric. Uh, and we brought the conversation back to the conservancy. Conservancy's on board with, um, you know, kind of refocusing our energy with the, with the five-year plan. But this is actually new, new territory for our five-year plan to sort of modify midstream. Um, but what we're going to need to do that is some sort of conceptual idea of what it is we're saying we're going to do. And it's a conceptual cost estimate the way we have on all the other projects in the five year plan. So we got to move this effort forward, even know what we want. We sort of know, know where we're going at. So, so I think uh, uh, getting that started is a good next step. All their next steps are continuing to work with uh, DPW Streets. Sorry, this isn't the most legible, um, but that, that coordination and, you know, like Ann said, all the things that they can do, make sure they do do. So that's just kind of what I was 
trying to allude to, but I think just sort of just walk it through is like this is yeah. So this is something that like when we go through the five-year plan, as we hear these are our priority projects, we just sort of take that on and sort of getting very, 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 very ballpark numbers that we can put in the plan because we want numbers associated with projects. So for us to do that amendment, we need to generate that number. So sort of we need to have this work. Very, very conceptual. So the the concept design. Yes, to like to basically get us to a point where we know what it is we're trying to do. So that's really the only way we can move forward. So you know, we're saying, you know, we'll sort of lead 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 us along this this path. We welcome partnership in that regard. Honestly, the next meeting we have, I think it's Ann's presentation that she sent me today, because it does a great job of just sort of laying out all the issues in a very, very easy way. So I think there's sort of logical path forward. I've been to that, but I think we need to just sort of do that in a smaller group um, and sort of a more focused conversation as a next step. And then how do we get them put into the five-year plan in the prior one? So that's something that, as I said, we don't really have, a, this is new, new, new territory, so we're going to kind of figure it out as we go in terms of. Next year, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just basically, I think something, it's good that we're going through this for other things as they come up, but we have some sort of amendment process in place. We've just never had to. You know, crack it out. So yeah. we'll figure it out. I would suggest that when you do a conceptual plan, I think there's obviously there's three pieces here. Uh, I would put your budgets in three lumps, mm -hmm. right? Because there could be different funding for different months, obviously. Exactly. And, yeah. And within that big rectangle, there's priority, and there's a priority, right? <laughs> right. So <laughs> yeah, so just you know, pool. Lighthouse, play something like that. Mm -hmm. so you have three buckets of money which you need to do. And I think that's something that, you know, yeah, we can continue to fine tune at the working group level. Um, as Marianne mentioned, modifications to the lighthouse, as said, you know, Joe chimed in, you know, it's kind of a, a separate conversation, maybe, or just sort of a, you know, subsection of the larger plan. We need to coordinate with the Arts Commission on that. That is underway. And then also, you know, some sort of action items that are sort of moving along. Um, mural project, again, as I talked to Anne about today, that being our needs to be coordinated with the Arts Commission and being in the park is coordinated through our design review committee as things sort of move to real um, ideas. So, in terms of next steps, the thinking, you know, get this working group going. The people in this room are, are the same people that want to be part of that. So I guess just want to get your thoughts about when, you know, whether we necessarily need to set a date, you can do follow up the email, offering it up to everyone, people here, people who couldn't make it here today. Um, but like, are we thinking evenings? Are we thinking during the week, during the day, out of the question? Does this need to be weekend? I guess what are what are people's thoughts about uh, just sort of getting this process started and getting us kicked off the way that people can be engaged? Mm -hmm. Thoughts there? Mm -hmm. I I work at evenings. I work till six most nights. Me myself personally. So, so after six o'clock. All right. I mean that's good enough at this point, Brad. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean if you want if you want community input, it needs to be. I think you know the people who are most um, invested in the outcome of this project should be there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I wouldn't like blast it out to the whole email list okay. saying, "Hey, you know, do you want to be part of this? Because you want to put twenty people on it, and you will never get twenty people yeah. at any one meeting. And so you're going to be reiterating <laughs> the exact same stuff at every meeting." Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so I mean, you're probably better off like, with a handful of like six people, maybe max. Yeah. Is there anyone here who, uh, or any, I guess, my um, question, anyone not here that people that think stand out as being key, uh, key representatives, other than uh, Jay, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, there were some people when we did the Rediscover Riverside meeting and we talked about it. There were a couple of people that were really interested in participating as well. Um, and I can I can share that information with you and we can reach out to, to one or two of them because I think they would be like, you know, like a young couple that lives a block away. Well, yeah, they were the last meeting. Yeah, so you know, I think I think that you know we need to have a really good cross representation of the committee. Yeah. So you know, so and obviously Demetrius and Rosalind um, yeah. should be there. Yeah, I know Joe wants to get in the splash pad. Oh. 
So I guess just about summarize this. So they say boulders, approximately uh, six feet from edge of pavement, maximum five feet between boulders. Uh, install bollards, four feet separation between bollards. So that's just um, that's the detail. It's an all the notes. Sidewalk. Um, Sorry. Yeah, I would, I would imagine so. Six feet back off sidewalk. All along around the back, uh, removal bollards at the shelter building, removal bollards at that secondary entrance. Uh, then the boulders pick back up. They do sort of arbitrarily stop for a section. I think it's because there's a fence, section of fence. Yeah. So they pick back up, removal bollards either side of the pathway, uh, and then removal bollard placed at the uh, at the little entrance there south of the. Um, uh, uh, cemetery. I'll cover this stuff on the second half. Any comments or sort of questions about the south half? I, I don't understand why they got to go around like this. So just go and just keep it along the yeah, curve and out the front? You just follow them, right? Oh, so you're just saying terminate? Yeah, the seating oh, terminate the at the end. Around the, around the rocks around rocks. <laughs> rocks around concrete, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say it like that. Well, there's, there's, there's trees that are relatively close to space, but low hanging. Mm -hmm. You've got a wall that's roughly two feet high. How do you put rocks on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if anything, maybe you put some bollards in where the gap is. Yep. Yes. What are you going to do about the new trees in the landscape and all the compounds? Because the very few trees that are there are probably going to be by, by rocks. Uh, I think we'll have to look at them more closely. I think they're making a site walkthrough um, that I, I think has sort of led them to the assumption that they can fit them. Okay. So, so, I mean, they're pretty cheap. Yeah. So, I mean, we need to take a closer look at this just from a operations and maintenance standpoint, because if this means we can't get lawnmowers in and around, we're in big yeah. trouble. We're in big yeah. trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so, so again, I got this earlier right today. Yeah. So we're we're going to take a hard look at this from an operations and maintenance standpoint as well. Mm -hmm. Who else has this stuff? Uh, so. Uh, phase one has been installed at MLK. Phase two is probably going to be starting installed later this month. And front part has is further along in the design process, but that'll be a spring installation. You don't have any idea No, other than, you know, I mean. Well, I'm talking about MLK. You can't use MLK as a model because you don't know. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we, we can. We, I mean, we've got a year in with the, with the rocks here. So, you know, we have some sense. Um, we're trying to sort of think about creative ways in terms of, you know, do we need to string trim around every perimeter of every rock? Can we sort of work natural areas in? So we're, we're exploring some other ideas. I think that's okay. I I that, that's my point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll actually get, get to that idea too. So. Yes, it is. Just quickly, so for MLK, they have there's the rocks and the bollards. The bollards are removable. So when there's special events, when you need to, let's say for example for MLK Park, when you need to bring a stage into the park and they have to drive on the pave on the pathway, the bollard is removable by a BOPC employee. So that can be coordinated, but it's also controlled so that people don't. So it's kind of like not anyone can just drive through and have a right. stage there. It has this control and it's coordinated with us, and that's more better within our um, operate. I mean, operations team might in the loop and all that. So there's better communication, and that's the whole point. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Each one of these. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It helps with vehicles. It's not going to help with motorcycles and three wheelers and things. Uh, yeah. We saw one night in a. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that is true. Terrorizing. Right, I'm just curious, what's the difference or benefit between like the ballers versus the stones? 
So the, that is basically the point. They're only using, we're only putting bollards where they'd be removable. So they're basically in the pathways. So that means that, you know, we, we basically look, the boulders are everywhere we would not move and the bollards go in everywhere we might want to open it up and move them. So they're only in the center of paths. Are the ball, are, is it like cheaper to have the rocks versus bollards or is there? Yeah, I think it's, I think, uh, yeah, bollard is, I think, twice the cost of a boulder. Okay. Yes. Access in terms of safety. These mm cars -hmm. getting in, ambulances getting in. I mean, we do have situations that we need to get in. I don't know if it's a big one. Yeah, they'll, they'll come right in the car. Yeah. So, how are we getting the park? Should the ice rink? Um, typically, they can get through the back of the ice rink, right? they'll drive over the grass. That's typically where they are. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, so before you do that, um, can we do something? What can we do about that piece of test? Because just that's, sort a, of, that's a nice terminus of the street there. And yeah. I know this is just for security. So. Right. There's some scraggly pine trees. There's some, you know, this is asymmetry to the paths. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, at, at minimum, you know, we could at least sort of. Uh, I think it's a place for maybe a, a closer look. Just do something there. It didn't make the final cut in terms of in terms of that. Oh, <laughs> cracking this thing open with amendments, you know. I don't know. Uh, and, and but you, uh, and you get the whole ambulance issue. Mm -hmm. The yard area. to the edge of the pool. It's a little bit of lack of elegance going on there, but I think they're basically sacrificing this front area that if people want to drive up here, not put boulders along the entire stretch of Niagara Street and just sort of block it off from getting into oh, no. recreation. Areas. So we got to get the real work Well, so, so what they're saying there, or what I'm, what I'm interpreting is they leave 
they leave one little spot right next to the fence. But again, so it's the point of the description of the there to get you now. Come on, come on. All right. Yeah, that's so what we're suggesting is this. If anything, you wanted to cut the corner. Right, it comes a point, you sure. round the corner. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. It's really a shame you have to do this at all. Right. And if it's not gonna if it's not gonna solve the issue of kids riding their bikes, what are we what what issue are we solving here? Vehicles. Vehicles but not ATVs or bikes. ATVs. Cars, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that. Not ATVs. How many cars ride through there? It's all ATVs. I mean I have to ask a question. Because you're spending a huge amount of money on people's efforts. Right. If you're not solving the ATV issue and the dirt bike issue, I don't think the cars are accessing this big issue. The cars are accessing are the football. And you can go over and see people accessing football in front of the um, ice rink. That's where the cars are. Well, also, I, I get the complaints uh, at the basketball and tennis courts. And tennis. there's a ton of them that park there. Um, I've gone by before we 20, 30 cars that are parked at least. Yeah, like it's parking lot. They yeah. literally park. So you can see where the, the rod is and the blue curve yeah. at the time. They literally park next to those big trees right there, right along the yeah. path. They drive right up there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any more to go? Or don't we have any? They've done some ticketing, but you know, it's, if I get them there once a week to ticket, that's usually a lot. Yeah. And I try out, I try all five days. I mean, but it's. Anytime we're in the park, we're going to do high calls. I don't know. Why are they parking there? Is it because there's not enough space? Yeah. Honestly, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, this is the one, this is the one more I think. Yeah. Now you're having a whole other stuff. Yeah. 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 My suggestion would be is like when we do get more deeply into football and ice rink, that we get somebody from the leagues. Like I know I always mention to Jim Rogan, they're in the middle of football season now, so you know. They're not sending anybody at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think it would be important to have a, a, an ice rink person um, and a football person here to let us know sort of the intricacies of theirs. Um, I think, you know, I get calls quite often people that can't find enough parking there to get rid of the loop there that I think they can park on either side of the loop right now or at least one side. Um, it's so. it's like the drive. Mm -hmm. Well, when you jump the curve, you turn Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. And I think that's, yeah, make sure they're in the loop. Um, they're not proposing anything on this north section, I guess, because, you know, there's no recreation draw. So we would feel like we, they, it's not needed. I don't know. I just want to confirm that people have not seen no one has experienced any issues with. You say yeah. the Vulcan side? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the Vulcan side. I, I Basically, everything north is on the way. I people on the Vulcan side tell me every day they're tired of the lock guidance. It's just grown out of control and you can't see over it to the Vulcan side. Tell them who didn't say it. Yeah. Every day come to me and say it. Tell them the Vulcan side. It's grown out of control. I know. I know. Yeah, that's, what, that's what Madeline's over there, Christy's over there with the volunteers. Yeah. Getting things back under control. We had both of those vacancies for the majority of this year. So yeah. things did get a little over. Yeah. 100%. Did you guys get into the volunteer? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I, I, I for volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so are, are we feeling confident that? Uh, well, until no, the ATP starts turning up. Okay, so I think phase two, if needed. But there, I don't know. Yeah. Because you do just need respect. What's right? Also, there was a talk often on over the years, and I've never wanted to touch it because it's one of the thorniest subjects that you deal with, but making streaks in the one ways. And I know every now and then I would get somebody from football or uh, that uses the park talking about making totally one way, like uh, from Balkan to Taiwan Street. And their rationale was, was that you'd be able to increase parking, blah, 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 blah. Um, I've never really gone anywhere with that, but I just want you to be aware that that does pop up every now and then. Um, you know, and I tried to tell, I think, I don't think it's happened since Rogan's been ahead of Little League, though. Um, but, uh, I can't remember, it, it could have been 10 years ago that they last, it was last brought up. Um, and I didn't want to do anything because you make, you make change now. Sure. Which way Rush is one way that? Yes, and they wanted it to be one way from Balkan, or uh, from Niagara to Taiwan, and then. Could you make change? Well, wouldn't you, I mean, wouldn't they have to do like a track study to mm -hmm. see which direction the majority of the cars actually come from? To be honest with you, you know, it, no. 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 I mean, <laughs> I mean yeah. in the neighborhood, it's different, but in something like that. And I think that there was one, and I do think that the majority of the cars are not yet, but it's not one of them. Site where they, if they put the little tubes out and counted count traffic, they have those records available. So, and they do that on the half of the road, so you can see which way the traffic is going. So, I can just pull that info up. And, but it'd be a city, a city decision, so uh, uh, I think ah. it's not necessary to happen, but what? but it could be. <laughs> They've been driving up there for a while. You mean the pathway? <laughs> yeah, the pathway. Yeah, yeah. That's what I actually call them being up there. Yeah, so that would be, uh, that would no longer be possible. Right. 
in this, in this implementation yeah. strategy. So what Joe's saying, yeah. make sure they're aware of it before it happens. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll- um, To be honest, the only time that they would have to technically, you know, really drive up there is when they have uh, like the new equipment and things like that. I mean, they do it now as a convenience. And I've told them a few times, guys, the days are numbered. You know, you can park and walk up and that feet or whatever. But there's a few times a year that it would be helpful if they could get out there. Yeah, and I think that could easily be coordinated right. with someone who's got keys. <clears throat> okay. All right, so this is again, we're giving them feedback so early in the process that yeah, this is gonna come back around in three months and probably again, you know, six months. I'm not even sure this is a spring installation. But the plan is they're going to install, they want to install the new bollards next spring, right? Next year. Uh, I think this is, I think next spring is front park and that design has been almost finalized. Okay. So this might be next bit. summer. Okay. I'm not sure. So one thing that we've done, they, they weren't suggesting it in this park because a lot of the areas they're putting the boulders, there are trees nearby and you really don't want to be altering uh, soil heights around trees because you kill them if you, if you cover their roots. But other areas, so in MLK Park and in a couple areas in Front Park, what, what, what this is a proposal that we put, 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 put forward is some areas where the, where, the, where the boulders are, we actually build up on the backside and create these small natural pollinator areas. Um, so this would be wildflowers uh, and it would also, more importantly, be reduced mowing in sections. So it basically, creates an area off the backside of the boulder where things are built up and things are planted, uh, but on the sort of the working end of the boulder is still the barrier from the exterior. So it's sort of an enhanced landscape. No, it's basically little pockets along the way. So you can swing through between boulders too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> this is again a concept that we'll get to sort of see in action in other parks next year uh, and um, be able to evaluate whether there's any spots. What I was contemplating was if if we got feedback that this area needed to be fortified, you know, this naturalized edge of of, um, of Vulcan uh, would be a, you know a logical place to incorporate some more of some less mowing more naturalized areas. But so, we can cross that bridge when we come to it. So yeah. Brian, if you're gonna if you're gonna do something like the the wildflowers and things like that behind the boulders, um, and just and I'm assuming not behind every boulder, mm -hmm. um, how would you prevent the weeds from taking over and the wildflowers from thriving? Like what's how do you how do you prep the soil beds to do that? So um, you know, to some degree, it's it's you you prevent bad things by going in and and working through it. Um, also, the seasonal mowing eliminates some things, and mowing at proper times, uh, you know, can, can can minimize those sorts of things. But the idea would be that sort of just uh, bringing in new soil and, and 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 mulching, you get the new stuff, the good stuff established first. With some more intensive maintenance at the front end, uh, and then um, you know you're sort of off on a good start. But mm -hmm. it's a continuous issue. Can we look at trees or something? Maybe yes. Christmas trees. They last year to the world or whatever. Not suggested to the world for Christmas. Maybe there's some spiking. Not necessarily the weeds. This is one of the trees that's supposed to be in your river rock garden. It's a maintenance nightmare. So trees. I know. We can plant trees for sure. The city does not consider a tree a barrier. So you will not get a tree in place of a boulder. No, I'm yeah. getting a tree, possibly. I'm getting the ATVs as well. You know, like that is what everyone is trying to do. You got five for a barrier. Yeah. And most round. I mean, I'm trying to create a Certainly, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what we're talking for vegetation. That's 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 easy. Um, if if it's not wide enough to get a mower through, that would be where we might have a maintenance right. issue if we're sort of making these areas too narrow to maintain it. Now we're now we're weed whacking massive stretches in the area. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we have plenty of time to work out the details on this, but that's a good, good point. All right, so that's these are our, those are our big discussion items. I think we covered a lot of ground here, so that's going well. What's up? What's that? Oh, uh, it's already funded. No, no, we're just yeah, I think I, I think there's half a million dollars. I think. I think so, but that is that is yeah that, that that's that that's a number I I can get back to on because it's already approved by county council. What was allocated? All right, uh, baseball grant 125k got the update today. I know. They've been saying construction in October. It's now October. Uh, so it, I did get word it's, it's, it's going to be the latter half of the month, and it will be completed by the end of the year. So this is this this project, putting in the new backstop and all the other improvements, is a 2022 project that now um, now is um, you know just getting onto a contractor's work schedule uh, for later in October. Mm -hmm. Maybe well, I don't think we'll close out the project until spring to make sure everything establishes. Uh, but the, the, the lion's share of the work uh, they're going to have done for the end of the year is the plan. What I was told again, don't shoot the messenger <laughs> on these sorts of things. Another update on the ice rink. Uh, you know, talked to Steve Michelli earlier this, this week said that they turned on the power. Uh, that was long overdue. So power is restored. Can we confirm that? Yes. All right, power is restored. Uh, but he also informed me that six to eight more weeks of work to close out the project. How come every time you ask about project. it, it's always six to eight more weeks before they close it out? Just, just also, um, what's your position on the <coughs> Sorry? Utilization numbers for the ice cream. Because it's uh, such a huge facility that I could be even know. Yeah, you did you did bring that up. I I did not get those numbers, but I will get those they numbers. Exist. Sorry, Mary. Apparently they exist. And they've been, been confirmed or they're they're you have to find out what's up which contract to use this senior center. You don't take care of buildings, but did anybody ever talk to the city about getting trees off the roof? The soft tooth roof in the pool. You can you can see a couple of valleys oh, up there full of vegetation. <laughs> you can see, you can see, you can see trees so growing up there. Not even having it. It's <laughs> going for a green roof. That's used by somebody that yeah, used to be a senior sure. center that is no longer senior center. I'll, I'll that make the word of that too. Yeah. <laughs> so I can show how much stuff is being. Last I didn't notice, they're pretty well established. I don't care what they are. As long as they're existing, they're not a problem. Some other good information that we got from the, the on site meeting was that you know, while there are programs that Bud Bakewell and Hashtag Heroes, there is a city mandate of uh, uh, public free skating 10 hours per week. Um, so uh, that is something that you know we should be and making sure is publicized. Sorry. And not at midnight. <laughs> I, I guess that's a further for the detail. To right here. Yeah. And I know folks, you know, there's folks here, so I think it's 20, 20, 20, 20. All right. So those are two ongoing construction projects. As well, oh, we've got our okay. signage. Nope. Yeah, I did. I wanted to create the suspense. So I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. 
All right, so yeah, so Riverside Park as well. All the all the signs I know, and you noted the condition of the sign up there at the lighthouse. The money is in place. All those will be getting refreshed. The uh, RFP for that work is out, and we will get those numbers in a couple weeks. And we should be this should be moving forward by end of the month. <laughs> It's a diamond numbers. Yeah, so diamond yeah. numbers. Yeah. So we'll yeah, that's what they wanted to find out. I remember they asked me what diamond I was on. So they should be numbered. I'm probably older. Ah. Drawing the map. I'm sure you are. So we'll, we'll be getting that done too. All right. So with that, um, I guess projects. So before we move on to uh, issues and events, any other any other things to bring up? Converting on anyone's mind. We'll have another opportunity as we go. So, uh, moving it along. Um, again, this is more tied to the other bigger project, but big issue continues to follow up on are speeding issues. So, I think as we flush out get this working group coming, uh, we can we can be making sure that we're dealing with that. Another thing brought up: the Irene Gardner Bridge. Um, so, found out. Uh, I got a few pictures here. Nice picture over the bridge. Nice picture to the end of the beautiful view. Uh, and heard from the city. So, bridge was last inspected uh, July 2021. It was given a five out of seven rating, which is it is in good condition. Uh, it is constructed of something called weathered steel, which is supposed to rust, and it provides a protective coating, and it's not to be painted. So that's the, well, that's 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 What's that? What happens when you have tigers? So well, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the issue because yeah, what 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 is getting done is it is getting painted um, in terms of maintenance. Uh, basic maintenance is the responsibility of City of Buffalo Parks in terms of sweeping up glass, cleaning. They're supposed to be doing that. More major repairs are supposed to be coordinated with New York State. Maybe this isn't information everyone doesn't already know. I just need more follow through on it. But I guess this is the baseline of information. Uh, and um, you know, in terms of issues, right now your best bet is call three one. Uh, multiple people, multiple Yeah, I if the New York State is responsible for it, who in the U.S. How do we find out who did? I think this is actually a Security Authority project back in the day. Could that reach across? Because we can call Sean Ryan, or we can call people who. So I don't know the yeah, Andy only gave me New York State, and I would be my assumption that it's New York State Department of Transportation. Yeah, well, uh, that, that's why I guess it would, you know, it would be the three-way authority if it, that wouldn't be New York State. So maybe I need more clarification from Andy on, on that. I can get that. Um, I was actually surprised. You're trying to go half a million dollars, million dollars, you want to do something. This is pretty significant. Um, yeah. Certainly, I was trying to find, uh, I mean, I know off the top of my head, sort of ADA accessibility requirements, being that there's no run longer than 20 feet, uh, flat 30 down. inches, 30 inches, one in 12. Yeah. 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 yeah, so. So yes, yeah. so this doesn't comply no. with any of those standards. Um, whether it's grandfathered in, whether that sort of is a call for need necessary improvements, or whether it's mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. all right. So I'll get a bit further clarification on um, who the city's partner is in that process, uh, and. Um, the, the, you know. the theory of weather steel is very nice, but the thing is, is the weather is rust. It's a very, very slow process. So when you paint on it, the paint 
Because eventually we'll, we'll try more off. Don't Because I mean, you can't, the steel can't build it too quickly because then it loses its integrity and strength. Right. It's a very efficient process. <laughs> yeah. So, and it rusts and the things that we also must. Right. Yeah, yeah. it shirts down. Washes down. Yeah. So, this is sort of, I guess, the current status, but again, you know, I think you guys are maybe more informed on this than I am, but I'll, I'll try and get some more answers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's too bad you couldn't have something nicer like they didn't found the piece. I mean, that, that's a new yeah. idea. Yeah. It's got protection so stupid people don't throw bowling balls in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and that could be a good mouse. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, did want to sort of follow up. I did have some conversations with our operations team. We last meeting talked about operations. There was some concern. Uh, I think the specific wording of the concern was everyone leaves the park at 11 a.m. and doesn't come back for the rest of the day. Uh, so follow up on that. Uh, and some, some of the answer to that question is that District 1 the operations district is actually our largest geographic district in the system. The base of headquarters is Riverside Park, um, but they are responsible for maintaining Front Park, Prospect Park, Ferry Circle, Simply Circle, and Days Park. So in the afternoons, pretty much every afternoon, they are uh, moving and mowing. I know Mondays is Front Park, uh, their daily operations visiting each one of these. So um, there are going to be periods of time with our current staffing levels, which are low. We have open positions. We've had open positions all year long. It is going to feel like there is no one in Riverside Park because again, this is base of operations. They cover a lot of areas very far from Riverside Park. Whereas in other districts like Delaware District, you know, they never leave Delaware Park. They might be in a different part of the park, but they're still in the park. Here, you know, in the, in Mass, uh, there are periods of time where there is so. Hmm? The cell would be off the page right here. We don't take care of the cell phone. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So again, so this is all District One, uh, and you know Riverside Park. Being, being, having the best garage in, in that district, the equipment is there, or starts their day there, and finishes their day there. But three is just MLK. Three is just MLK. Yeah, that's a that's the smallest district. Um, because four back like district four is high. Sorry. The district four has a lot of spacing too, based on square footage. When you think about it and put it that way. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, this is our current structure. We are currently rethinking it. We don't know there'll be major changes, uh, but you know, it just so happens that you know this is all west side. You know, so there's a logic logic to clumping these together. Delaware Park is kind of a big, massive thing on its own. Everything else is down in South Buffalo, pretty far away. MLK is, you know, if we still had Humboldt Parkway. Then there'd be a significant amount of acreage connected there that would probably be in the in district three. But you know, that's just currently how we have things. So uh, you know, relatively small district one, but very spaced out, very big districts two and four, and then um, MLK just because of its location is, is, is kind of on its own. Uh, but I just want to sort of clarify again, uh, you know, I can assure you. We're working full days. Actually, district, oh, let's, let's tell everyone that district one is, is actually getting a lot of overtime to get their job done. So, so there is, uh, there is actually, you know, a lot of work happening um, and a lot of work needed because they're short staffed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's challenges. Um, I just want to assure everybody, you know, not, they're not kicking up their feet yet. Back in the days of the friends of Sorry? Back in the days, friends of old said, this is before you had it. Yep. No, you were thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> there was a big push for the whole 
Parkway Circle system by certain people on the committee. So, where's Actress and Parkways in the South area too? Yeah. The Kidney Circle. So, so, the Parkways in the South, there are Parkways by name, but they're more akin to Porter Avenue and Richmond Avenue. There's no Parkway <laughs> associated with them. It's just the circles that uh, actually have real estate <clears throat> that needs maintenance. I mean, why isn't there a crew that takes care of parkways? So that was how we had the initial con 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 construction. Uh, but then uh, just because like this is this is basically the limits of, yeah. uh, the of landscape. They're all adjacent. So you don't have to put a mower on a trailer to get to any of those spaces. They can all operate out of the well, then they got to put those on a trailer because you can't, you can't drive a mower down. Maybe Mary, Mary, Mary Simpson can get on a lawnmower. Don't make me tell Mary what you're saying about it. Uh, yeah, so, you know, continue the conversation, but uh, yeah, this is sort of the like, current structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, then that's the that's the whole point of this group is sharing this stuff. This goes up on our website. You get these get these graphics off there. Okay. That's the logical That's what we just got heat yesterday. Now they got electric. It was cold for a long time. It is unfortunately the best garage in District One. Oh, All right, so just as a wrap up, um, again, <coughs> unless there are any new issues of, 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 of today, uh, again, you mentioned Christy uh, was out, did a community uh, gathering on September 10th, but in addition to that, we've had uh, I believe this is Canon Design. Who's in the blue shirts? Do you remember Ziggy? Uh, okay, because there's a UV group yeah. came out. There was a big group. I want to say that was Canon. Canon Design? I think so. Then they changed their color. They did some rebranding, I guess, yeah. Uh, and then again, you know, community groups coming out. So we've taken down a, a, lot, of, a lot of vegetation in uh, River Rock Gardens. Uh, so she's they've really been uh, um, making hay. No, that's not the deal that they made. And then community day out there, small group of uh, very dedicated volunteers. Uh, also, uh, what was the date in our movie night? Twenty third. August. It was so cold. Cold? Yeah. Cold? Yeah. 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 It was cold, but everyone who attended, they brought like comforters and blankets. I'm like, you guys have to wear it. So, it's only the later we do it, the earlier we do it in the summer, the later we do it. Because we basically just start. Yeah, so that's the only thing. I'm not sure. I think I think the same. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that week was very interesting. Yeah. But thank you, Dina, just for helping with all the mentions. It was great. And we also partnered with Journey's End and Buffalo Streamworks. So the kids at Buffalo Streamworks, which their HQ recently moved to Niagara Street, they helped pick the movie. They had a little bowl. We gave them posters, and stickers, and they all came together and picked the movie. So it was a great partnership. and. If there's anything that you guys would like to do with those two organizations, I know they really want to engage and they have a lot of engagement with the Riverside Park neighborhood kids already. So, is there anything else? What, what are the two groups? Sorry? What are the two groups? Buffalo Streamworks. So, that's a, oh, Buffalo yep. So, they engage a lot of kids with like Pay a Dollar and free music lessons after school and Journeys and Refugee Services. All right, so with that, once again, anything in anybody's mind haven't covered that they want to be thinking yeah, about for future quarters?
bathrooms, and garbage cans. So if you took away the port of John at the playground, what or where did you replace it with? So that was actually not one of our the city just had it taken away. So it was never empty, it was never clean, it was just it. So there is nothing else. Yeah. I do not know <laughs> where the conservancy has ported. So does that mean does, does that mean that our park people are using the rock garden? Yeah. How about if we start? Yes, using, yeah. How about if we use one the, inch? The um, uh, ice skating. All right. So the ice skating, I've been informed our workers have access to. Well, we do have one outside the garage that we actually use. Portable toilet. Yes, we should be. Okay, so there's that. Uh, I, 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 I believe I was told by Jimmy that. I don't know who I was told by, oh, Z baby, that the that the ice rink is available to park workers. Can you tell me this? Oh, I didn't. I there was, I don't know when that was so nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah, so no, 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 Public. I think, Brian, one of the problems yeah, was, if I recall, it's not the ice cream per se. I think it's Little League football that has the outdoor bathrooms. Yes. And when it, I just remember going back like, to David Ritepi being council member in the 80s, that there was an issue with both Little League, Little League baseball and Little League football about when they would open up the jobs and they, the However, it just became it's only open when we're playing. Right. Well, but that's true. I believe when I actually talk about the ice cream. No, but the ice yeah, it's you can't well, you have to get golf up. Uh, yeah, you gotta go through the ice cream into the into the pool bathroom, right? Yeah, I'll bet you got the same deal with Hashix. Uh, right. yeah. But the city's got the vendor managing. The vendor's not gonna manage them, not there. Yeah, it's and no, but that's a city brand. I know that the city has the vendors who manage the toilets. Right. So that's the same the way they're there. You're a vendor. They're there all the way with the baseball, so like, take her to go. Like, comparing it to when the pool was open. So, let's talk pre COVID when the pool was actually open. How the change will really happen is I'm just using Monday as an example. So, the pool would be open from, I think it was till 7 p.m., correct? Mm -hmm. so until dusk. Um, what would happen is the lifeguard would come to the shack and let us know they were closed for cleaning because they also have to clean the bathroom before we can take over. And then at that point, our responsibility would be from seven o'clock at night until we were done at baseball and it would be our responsibility to clean it so that when they came in in the morning, there was no mess for the other vendors would be like that. So that's kind of how we work the bathroom, uh, but it is to the vendor's discretion. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what about some well, like reasonably placed porta johns somewhere in the park? Because, like, people using the the shelters for a family picnic, right? What do they do? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I mean, there was a, for a period of time. I know we used to have a portable toilet at that car turnaround. Right. Uh, that. Sure. It's not a long term. I mean, I don't no. Yeah. No, but I mean, in the interim, until you figure out, like having, you know, the, the splash pad open or the pools open in the summertime so that there's access to them during those hours, you know, there's, they need to have toilets. We can't have people defecating in the rock gardens. Yeah. And that's, I'm sorry, it's, that's most disgusting it's, and it's uh, very unsanitary. It's a real conundrum for as many bathrooms as there are in this park. I mean, the other parks have far less, but they're all. But we have none that are open. I know. I know. I think, I think, I would say, and I don't want to say this because I can't process it. We need to ask the question. You know your rules as you call the open. Football has their rules. 
Okay, does 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 hash zeros have their rules too? I mean, are these contracts rule? Are they written? Or is the city suddenly defaulted to you guys to make you responsible if you do that? Yeah. You know, let's face it. Yes. And there's no parks person that's responsible. So it's not you. So who? And maybe we need a parks monitor for that one on Sunday, it's going to be Sunday on the week. I mean, it's not necessary. No, through the through July and August. But well, you're going to have people in the when there's when there's no baseball, when there's no football going on during the daytime hours and the nice weather. But like, I would yeah, say yeah, it's for lunch. Yeah, it's yeah. 11 to 1. We had baseball this summer, not at 11 to 1. Mm -hmm. I, I have it at 5 p.m. You know what I mean? So yeah. there was free lunches there with more port potty than I would personally like port potty. Um, that's my thought on that port potty. I've sure. seen <laughs> things that have happened that I want to be part of, but um, that's something too that I noticed because. Yeah, I would see, you know, I would drop and cutting off, you're getting ready, and I would literally see people paying on trips. Okay. Yes. So, 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 so there are appropriate countries, you know, and maybe it's maybe it's very limited, but maybe it's actually there so that it's very limited. You're building the building on the square, but you're doing all the stuff. You're asking people to come and have a Yeah. I think very we can talk good. to Hashtag Heroes and the Little League football, see how we can come from. Well, it's more than that, because those are very, you know, very limited in terms of hours, and there's, there's other plenty of time and spaces. Yeah. But do, you, yeah. do you think there's room in like, how our operations have, like, can we have keys? Or is that, it, it's, it's all in the contract. Yeah, because then if we're opening it, then it becomes our responsibility. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I was not going to get yeah, it's unfortunately, I think, going to be a little more complicated. It's going to be very complicated. Yeah, for sure. I have the story that we have in the media. Exactly. All right. I think that's a good, that's a good, I think, more comprehensive topic. We can circle back on that, uh, get some clarity. Um, so, uh, nothing else. We are getting close. Uh, to wrapping up, um, I can't say so. We're going to get back on the working group. Uh, we are going to contemplate, um, and again, we don't want to be sprung anybody, but potential reformatting of you know these meetings as we go forward. If there's a, a low time of year, maybe we do something all on Zoom. Maybe you know if we keep having the in-person meetings, maybe do something that's more of like a formal like a newsletter kind of thing. So we're going to explore those kinds of things, but otherwise, um, you know, please spread the word about this conversation. Yes. Uh, you know that your our conduit can get the grant. You're our only mechanism by which we can get the grant. So it's actually these tools. Yep. There will come a time when that's not going to be acceptable for you, but you may want to have a representative to come somehow. He said he's not doing that right now. Right. Could you get miserable enough? I'm aware of the arrangement. Uh, and I'm up to the challenge. Let's we'll see. Let's we'll see how it goes. Um, did you get one other thing that you and I talked about earlier today? Um, did you get an update on whether the ARP money was requested yet or anything? No. Okay. No clarity there. Okay. Yeah. So, do you so, know whether anybody's looking for air money for renovation? No, I don't. Okay. I don't know for sure. All right. Yeah. And the other, the other thing that's going to be an issue is we've got this conflict with Riverside because it's an Park. Right. It does not address George Washington. It doesn't address any of our other. So, what's the mechanism by which we can do that? That's a great handy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, so that is, he's, you know, what he informed me, even with like the, the master plan stuff, in terms of you want more input, I should have circled back on this, but in terms of more input into the concerns about the master plan, I brought this up. He says, within the master plan, it suggests you reach out through 311 and make those, make those comments, and that is the process. 
But just remember, that's their excuse that there's no 311 calls, and it's a double edged sword. I mean, because that's what happens to me when I go and I meet with them, and they say, There's been no 311 calls, there's been no official request. Well, I'm the official request, and they're like, Well, that's great, but you know, maybe we need a 2311 to document things. You know, there's frustrations with the response through it, but that's really like they, you know, that's the mechanism that gets the paper trail that they like to have for their decisions. One of the ways that we will try that I'm working on with Journey's end, that we had conversations, nothing concrete yet, but one of the ways is to kind of like how do we engage, like you said, the immigrant and refugee community? Because maybe they don't. Maybe to them, a community meeting isn't the place to go to have their voice heard. Maybe they don't even know that they could have their voice heard. Like, you see, if you're working on demand, there's like two, there's at least 200. Yes. I mean, it's useful. All kinds Actually, of I don't know if they don't recognize that they can demand a hand and services or if they just don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it's working with these refugee organizations or even just like, for example, there's the Burmese community services that Brian and I met with, his name is Stephen, and kind of like asking them, like, what are some activities or meetings that you guys already have? We will go to the meetings if you will let us, like, we'll go as guests, we will talk, we'll have a translator on site to talk about park issues, and then ask them, like, how are you using Riverside Park? Do you have any concerns? Do you need, what do you need? So asking them this about these things in the and in, in an environment and a meeting in an event that they are comfortable with, instead of asking them to come to us, because why would they? Why would they trust us? They wouldn't. Right. So going to them instead, and we are trying to come up with strategies to do that in a sensitive and respectful way. And when it comes to a point where maybe over time they get to know the conservancy, they get to know like Brown Riverside Alliance, and maybe they come to the meetings and and having and one of the things is like putting so working with. Um, uh, that access services, for example, to always have in upcoming meetings to always put in all our flyers that you can request for translation and interpretation services, translation into different languages, interpretation for ASL sign language, whatever you need, so that you can come to a meeting. And these are just different ways we're hoping to engage different communities and also find out different opportunities that exist in the community already and go to their meetings. Hopefully that. Helps with. I mean, this is completely out of here. This is completely from another 
Yes, absolutely. and I mean, I think the more we get people in, from different communities engaged in how tribe this is public engagement for relating to city, relating to government, like parks and, and public entities, I think they would be over time better integrated in the community. And I mean, it takes a long time. They are our community. Yes, exactly. They are our community. They're just uh, voicing mm -hmm. that. Yes. Absolutely. So, to make them feel more belong, that they can actually make a difference too. And we want we want to hear you. So we are trying to bridge that gap and we appreciate any support that we can hear from you. Yeah, we, we really are really trying to hear. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we'll be circling back. First and foremost, on the working group to get that wrong. Right. I don't remember. I can't read it. You were done. 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 You were